Hello, everybody, and welcome to Quadratics. Okay, we are all done with um, linear relations, and we are moving on to quadratics. So this is a big, exciting thing, and um, things are about to change a lot. So today is really just about exploring quadratic relations and kind of seeing how a quadratic relation is uh, different than a linear relation. And you'll see soon that they are quite different from each other. Um, so there is quite a lot of red filled in in this video. So if you want to go through and just fill in the blanks and then come back and listen to me later, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you can do that. But please ensure that you do listen to my commentary as I add in a lot of important points. Um, so basically, um, sometimes a curve of fit is more appropriate than a line of best fit. So we need more than just lines, obviously, to model what goes on in the real world. So linear relations look like this, like they can go, uh, they can slope up in both directions, they can slope down in both directions. But in either, no matter what, in the linear relationship, the first differences are equal. Right. If you're taking a look at a table of values like down here and you check first differences like here from two to four is up two, from four to six is up two, from six to eight is up two and from eight to ten is up two. Those first differences are equal. So if first differences are equal, that right away tells you that you are looking at a linear relation. Okay, and that's because the rate of change is constant. Y is always just increasing by two every time, which gives a straight line. Okay, now if you look at the equation, the degree is one. Okay, so the highest exponent is one. So that could be things like Y equals X, Y equals three X plus five, two X plus Y equals zero. Okay, there are no squareds on any of the X's. Now a quadratic relation, however, the second differences are equal. So if you're taking a look at this table of values, notice that from two to three, it goes up by one. From three to six, it goes up by three. So right away, you can see the first differences are equal, so it's not linear. From six to 11, that goes up by five. And from 11 to 18, that goes up by seven. So those are the first differences. Now the second differences means to find the, first, the differences of those. So these are the first, so now we do the second. So from one to three goes up two, from three to five goes up by two, and from five to seven goes up by two. So therefore we can see that the second differences are equal. So that means that we're looking at a quadratic. Now if neither first nor second differences are equal, then it's neither linear nor quadratic. Okay, so this means there's a variable rate of change. So y is going up by one, then it's going up by three, then it's going up by five. The rate of change is not constant. And the degree of the equation is two. Now it's important that you understand that it's two when it's expanded. Okay, um, we'll be learning later how to expand. But here you can clearly see you have an x squared, so you know it's quadratic. Here you have an x squared, an x, and a constant, so again, the highest exponent is two, so that's quadratic. Now, later on, we'll learn how to expand things like this, but with the distributive property, you know that you'll do x times x, so you will get an x squared. So this is quadratic as well, and same thing, when you square this x value, you get an x squared. So these are all examples of quadratic um, relations. Now, a quadratic is modeled by a parabola. So it's a curve that looks like this. It may open up or it may open down, okay? Parabolas are always symmetrical. They always have a lowest or highest point. Um, and they open up or down, like I said. Now, they might be narrower like that, or they could be much wider like that. We will be learning what determines that as we go, okay? So you could have a min, or you could have a max, okay? But again, we'll be learning about that as we go. 
So I already kind of started example one here by checking the, the finite differences. So finite differences just means first and second, or you know later on in uh, further grades, we'll go on to third differences and things like that. Okay, so let's plot the points to confirm that this is actually linear and that the second one is quadratic. So zero, two is here, one, four is here, um, two, six is here, three, eight is here. So clearly this is linear. It creates a straight line when graphed. Okay, now you'll see that this does not create a straight line. So we have zero, two, one, three, excuse me, two, six. Okay, <coughs> can't fit 311. But it's clear here that this is not going in a straight line. This is just actually half of a parabola. The other half would be going up here on the other side. So this is uh, linear and the other one's quadratic. Okay, so example two outlines how you can um, come up with a table of values given an equation. So later on, we will learn how to graph quadratics without having to create a table of values. But for today, um, until we learn that, when you get a quadratic relation, you can create a table of values. Okay, so notice that you should choose negative x values and positive x values. Now, obviously, I know a bit more about this equation, so I chose these x values strategically. But until you know more, you kind of just have to keep throwing in more x values until you have enough information to get the entire picture. So this is an arch, um, in a, like a galleria is a mall. So think about it. An arch looks like this, something like that. Um, so y is the height in meters above the floor. Okay, so obviously we don't want it going below the floor. And x is the width from the center. So the highest height is going to be here on the center, and then it's going to curve down. So how do we know this is quadratic? Well, we look at the equation, and the highest exponent is 2. It's a degree 2, so therefore it's quadratic. Now we want to graph it using a table of values. So I already did the first ones for you. So all I'm doing is taking this negative 7 and putting it into the equation. So I don't have my calculator right here, but it is important that you are entering this properly. So you can enter this all in one line. So for instance, if I was putting in negative 7, you would just put negative, the white negative button, then start a bracket. Oh, sorry, you don't need a bracket. Negative 0 0.55, then put your bracket then put your negative 7. Now close the bracket before you square. Okay, you're squaring all of negative 7. That is crucial or else you will get the wrong answer. Okay, plus 26. Okay, so I did the first ones for you. So I'd like you to pause the video and try putting in 3, 5, and 7. Did you pause? <laughs> All right, so you should have gotten 21.05 for here and 12.25 and then negative 0 0.95. Okay, notice that these are the same y values that occur in the negative x values. And again, that's just because this parabola is symmetrical. Parabolas are symmetrical, so that will happen. So if we plot this, um, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we put it just slightly negative here. And we can do the same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, in this direction. Oh, and before I go any further, I should say that I put my scale of y's up by 2. So here's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 16, 18, 20, 22. Okay, and then negative 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is at 12.05, so basically just barely above 12. And positive 5 is that high too. Okay, I like to do them at the same time. You don't have to, but just to keep the symmetry going there. And then at negative 3, we are at 21.05. So 
So this is, I'm oh, sorry, this should have been 24 there. So we're going out by twos. So this is 22, so 21 is halfway. So this is one, two, three, same thing. And then zero is at 26, which is right here. Okay, so you don't want to do a connect the dots where you do a series of straight lines, okay? You want to create a smooth curve. So often it's easiest to come from the top and go down. Okay, from the top, go down, something like that. <laughs> not my greatest. Okay, so I'm not continuing this down even further because notice that we can't, um, this is an arch, so it can't really go below the floor. If it was a quadratic not in the real world, you would be continuing it like this. It would continue down and you would put arrows on either side. But again, because of the context, we don't include that. Or if you do include it, you should do it as dots. So how tall is the arch? Well, it's um, the tallest at the center there, so we can see that it's 26 meters. So now I wanna estimate the width of the arch. So what we know the arch stretches just under seven meters. Okay, how do we know that? Well, because what at seven meters, it's, uh, it, it's below the surface of the floor. So we can say at seven meters, below floor. So let's just estimate um, that it goes 6.9 in both directions. So that would mean that it's the width is 6.9 this way and 6.9 this way. So the total width is um, width is two times six point nine or six point nine plus six point nine, which gives us thirteen point eight meters is a good approximation of the width. Okay, now it says how high is the arch three meters horizontally from one end? Okay, it's tempting to just use this coordinate. <coughs> But notice that this three means three meters from the center, okay? Three meters from the center instead of three meters from the end. So it wants three meters from one end. So that's one, two, three. So just under four. So we want to let our X be equal to about 3.9, okay? You might want to make a note of why it's not x equals 3 because that in this case would represent 3 meters from the center. This asks for 3 meters from one end. So if we put that into the equation, okay, again, you can do it all in one line. I encourage you to do it with me. Minus uh, 0 0.55 bracket 3.9 end bracket squared plus 26 is 17.6345. So this is how you should enter it. Y equals negative 0 0.55 bracket 3.9 squared uh, plus 26 is equal to approximately 17.63 meters. Now let's make sure that makes sense. If you would go up from here, then that makes sense. That that would be 3.9 Oh, 17.63. Notice just for notation purposes, I'm doing two decimal points for each one. Um, either I should do them both at one or both at two. It's not really a, um, notationally correct to put 3.9 comma 17.63. You should sit, stick to either two or one decimal places for both. So there you have it. That's your introduction to quadratics. Um, read the success criteria. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you learned lots.